Selamat pagi. Mari kita berdiri ya dan berdoa. I want you to lift up your hands to Jesus. Thank you Lord. Father, we thank you for Malaysia. This is the land that you placed us in. No matter what is happening in this land, Lord, you are on the throne. Father, you have said in your word in Psalms 46 verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I'm exalted over the nation. I will be exalted over the nation. I'll be exalted over the earth. And Lord, we just pray for our land. Give us a godly government. Give us, dear Father, every race, every tribe and tongue in this nation. We pray for every church will rise up, dear Father, to be a lighthouse for you, dear Father. Today we just commit the City Revival Church into your hands. You have a plan and a purpose for this church to be relevant to the community. Bless the nation of Malaysia. I want you to stretch your hands towards Pastor Pastor Suresh, his wife, as they hold their hands together. Let me just release this word over the family. Can you do that right now? Thank you, dear Father. In the richness of your presence in the abundance of your presence this morning lord the word that you have laid in my heart i want to release to them pastor suresh and uh, pastor santini for this day the lord will have this known to you as in psalms 115 was 12 through 15 the lord will have this known to you as a primary word for a time and a season such as this that he is ever mindful of you and he will bless the works of your hand he will bless the works of the church He will bless your family and you he will re- re- increase you more and more said the Lord as in Hebrew the 6th chapter was 10 the Lord will have this known to you the Lord is not unjust towards the love and the labor that you have shown towards his name uh, as you have ministered to the his saints uh, for this day the lord will have this known to you as in hagai chapter 2 was 8 and 9 the silver is mine and the gold is mine your later glory will be greater than your former glory the word that god just gave me as i was praying for you, you and your family in the church this is what the lord will say number 1 he is ever mindful of you he's ever mindful of you that's number 1 number 2 your later effect effectiveness is going to be greater than the former effectiveness your later anointing is going to be greater than your former anointing for this day the lord will have this known to you i've assigned a season of acceleration a season of restitution a season of restoration and now a season of rebuilding that which is not complete will be completed that which is not restored will be restored that which is not confirm will be confirmed that which has not been fulfilled will be fulfilled father i just lift up this entire family and his grandchildren into your hands bless them bless the church this morning I pray for everyone who has walked into this sanctuary were coming back after a lockdown after this this uh, this restriction bless them dear father we give you praise we give you glory and everybody said amen put your hand together and give Jesus the glory amen please be seated please be seated isn't that wonderful come on somebody shout amen please wow yesterday was an awesome wedding service huh? not that i preach but it was such an awesome awesome atmosphere praise god um i can't see some of you at the back you know <laughs> do we have light to increase no as the lighting okay let there be light <laughs> cuz some of us are already dark <laughs> cannot see doesn't matter you know um this is a beautiful sanctuary you know really is beautiful whatever we designed this is beautiful and um uh, Everything looks so awesome. Praise God. This morning are you ready for the word? Yeah. Come on, are you ready? Jesse confirmed the message I was battling with uh, 
two messages and uh, Jesse confirmed the message this morning in, a, in one of the choruses as well as um, uh, the last statement that she made that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Praise God. This morning, the Lord wants to encourage each one of us, all of us. He wants to encourage us. So therefore, please turn with me to Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 37 to 39. I want to be encouraged by the Lord. I'm sure you want to be, right? Okay. Sometimes in the church, we're just asked to do this, do that. Okay. Sometimes we don't. Um, is this my water? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, we become so weary of doing this, doing that. I'm also a pastor. I was just told yesterday and today, all the people are coming back, you know. Um, April 1st, uh, the causeway was open, you know. And at 12, sorry, at 11.45, at 11.45, on Singapore already released the people across. 11,000 people waiting at midnight to cross. It was a real jubilation. Come on, really. Families were separated. Children were separated. And we had to add one more prayer. <laughs> and that prayer is, Lord, even though these families are not broken, they are separated. Pray for them. We pray. We pray for them because children, not everyone. So, um, why did I say that? Anyway, uh, God wants to encourage us. That's, uh, that's, uh. <laughs> Let me just drink some water. I'm glad to see you. All right. Glad to see all of you come back. And those online, we're also excited that you can... Follow the service online. Praise God. Turn with me please to your Bibles. Okay, Romans the 8th chapter. I can't come down, but I think in, I can come and stand on the chair. Is that all right? Okay. Russian. Huh? SOP to Noah. Anybody report me how? <laughs> okay, okay. Distance. Simply asking for trouble, right? Okay, Romans the 8th chapter. Um, was 37 to 39. Pastor Chantini, the Lord wants you to be encouraged, okay? Don't be discouraged. The word for you is Hebrew, the Hebrew 6, 10. That's the word for you. You shall be much more rejoicing than before. Okay? Praise God. Romans, the 8th chapter, was 37 uh, to 39. 37 to 39. Yet in all these things, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. In all these things means whatever. Everybody say whatever. Whatever that's overwhelming you. Okay? Let's move on. For I am so convinced, and it says here, for I am Persuaded, I am doubly convinced. Saya yakin dalam bahasa Malaysia. I am so convinced. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, or, uh, or no heights, nor depth or nor any other created things shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Can somebody say amen please? Isn't that wonderful? It looks like you and I can never be separated from the loving kindness of God. Are you here with me? That's why David says in Psalm 63, verses 1, 2, and 3, verse 3, your loving kindness is better than life. Come on, somebody say amen, please. Sometimes doing life is such a burdensome. Are you here with me? Can somebody say amen, please? Having said this, I like to quote uh, two quotations. One is from Rick Warren. I'm not sure about the other one. Now, look at this. God's it, all this is in line with God's love. Everybody say, God's love. 
Now, everybody loves love, right? Is there anybody who doesn't love love? Okay. I mean, good love, not bad love. Okay? I always say this to couples who are getting married. Puppy love always leads to dog's life. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay? Now, so therefore, every one of us like love. Seriously, the opposite of love is unloved. Rejection. How many of you like rejection? You must be crazy. I pray for you later. Okay? We all love love. You know, we have this home called Grace Home. Grace Home. I think both Pastor Suresh and his wife are aware of this home. And uh, this home uh, houses all the mentally challenged women. You know, all of them are there. Now, when you go to this home and you're stressed out, you know, the church is near, the home is near the church. You know, when you're stressed out, I think they've got 39 people right now. Okay? Now, when you're stressed out, Mengi and Valerie, we have some more, one more new worker. When you're stressed out, Pastor Boy, and I go to the home. You know what? They are perpetually smiling. <laughs> Perpetual smile. Some of them are schizo. Some of them bipolar. Some of them, doctors cannot define them crazy above craziness. You know? And they're perpetually smiling. Now, what some of the girls there... They are probably 50, 40. They always say this to Pastor Boy. Pastor Boy, what I need. <laughs> they don't have to tell me because I think they don't like Indian, I think. <laughs> Suppose they're mentally so unsound. They're scared of the Indians, I think. <laughs> there were times they would give us love letter too. <laughs> Once, accidentally, Pastor Boy took a letter from her thinking that she's giving the house number to call, and there she wrote, he, she loves him. Come to church, you only look at him. <laughs> I mean, see, even though they're so mentally challenged, you know, they don't, don't understand half the things that are happening, but still, they love love. Come on, somebody say man, please. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? How many of you love love? Don't put up your hand, please. Okay? God's greatest attribute is not his power. God's greatest attribute is not his power, though it's omnipotent and omniscience. Now look at this. Not his glory, though it's a burning majesty. But it is his love. Can somebody say man, please? Come on, somebody shout amen, please. We often minister deliverance. We often minister deliverance. As, as The latest was last week. Uh, yes. You know, once the demons are cast out, we make it a point to minister the Father's love to them. And they're so yielded to this love. This is an amazing love. This is a healing love. Now, Rick Warren... Rick Warren says this, God's love never runs out. God's love never wears out. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Having said this, there are only two things that will hold you back from the love of God, where the love of God is not found. If you read Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 37, 38, 39, neither death, nor life, nor height, nor depth, nor principality, all that. You notice there were two things that are missing, that the love of God cannot be found there. Number one, when you continue to live in your past, God's love is a present tense and a future tense. Are you here with me? Can somebody say man, please? For some reason, if you're living in the past, you notice the present and the future is mentioned. The past is not mentioned. How many of you are living in your past hurts and past bitterness and unforgiveness and trauma? 
And the Bible tells us clearly as we enter into a new season 2022, the Bible clearly tells us in Isaiah 43 verses 18 and... Wow. Am, am I okay? Okay. 18 and 19. Do not remember the former things. Do not remember the former things. No matter how painful it can be. No matter how hurtful it can be. No matter how traumatizing it can be. Or no matter how good it can be. Do not remember. Do not remember the former things. Nor consider the things of the old. Don't live in the past. Don't live in the past. Are you here with me? A wife lives in the past. She's no longer a wife. She's a knife. Yeah, somebody, ho, oh, oh. That's the truth. She keep cutting. But when the husband who lives in the past, he will no longer be a husband. He'll be a rubber band shooting at one another. Shooting with words. Shooting the words of the past. Come on, somebody say, ouch, amen. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of the old. And the verse 19 is a promise for a new season, even as the church has been open right now. The new season is, I, the Lord, will do a new thing. I, the Lord, will do a new thing. And, 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 and you will perceive it. You will perceive it. And now it shall spring forth. I'll do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. And you will perceive it. Look at this. Look at God's love. It's a miraculous love. Everybody say miraculous love. I will make a way in the wilderness. I'll make a way in the wilderness. The impossible. These are set to become a possibility. It takes you to have just a whisper of faith. Whisper of faith. Are you here with me? Not the loud shouting of your prayer. Whisper of faith. Even a whisper of faith can bring a miracle. Well, it's here. Some of us need this miracle. Is it cold? Yeah, huh? cold, huh? That's why we need more people here. See? This is called herd warmness, not herd mentality. Herd home. Right? Is it, is it cold? How many of you feeling cold? Huh? I was almost a frozen meat there. <laughs> I'll make a way in the wilderness and I'll bring forth rivers. Everybody say rivers. Rivers in the desert. Not just river, rivers in the desert. Come on. Blessings upon blessings, breakthroughs upon breakthroughs, healing upon healing, and miracles upon miracles. Come on, put your hands together. Give Jesus the glory. Hallelujah. Come on. That's number one. If you live in the past, the love of God is not there. It's not there. You are high and dry on your own. That's why people who live in the past are miserable. Somebody say miserable. Today, if there's one thing that I want you to do is to get out of your past and surrender this to God and ask God to give you the miracle of forgetfulness. Not dementia. The miracle of forgetfulness. Forget, I've gone through hurts. I've gone through betrayals. I've gone through backstabbing. I've gone through all that. But I've asked God to, to give me forgetfulness so that I can go forward. They backstab you because they're at the back of you. Are you here with me? Come on, somebody say amen, please. They talk about you because you are the headline and they're at the back of you. Come on, somebody say amen, please. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, somebody say amen, please. Number two, where can be the love of God be absent? Where? Dimana. You notice carefully, Romans the 8th chapter, we saw 37, 38, 39. You know where the love of God is absent? In your negative emotions. Ha, seriously. Seriously. If you have not forgiven someone, and you're struggling with unforgiveness because you don't want to forgive, then you're on your own. Serious, you're on your own. 
Because someone, I was counseling this young man. I told him to forget, forgive, forgive and forget. He turned around and said, sure, I'll follow your instruction. I'll forgive and forget the person. Now you can't do that. Come on, are you here with me? Can somebody say man, please? Now let's look at Hebrew, the 12th chapter, verse 15. Hebrew, the 12th chapter, and verse 15. And I like to read uh, from uh, New King James, looking carefully. Everybody say, looking carefully. Are you New King James now? Okay, well, what a, we are born again now. <laughs> Seriously, NIV has got some scriptures not there. You know that? Some scriptures you don't like, you can buy an ivy, okay? Now, looking carefully, that means being watchful, being sober, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Come on, are you here with me? One of the dynamic product of the grace of God is the love of God. Come on, are you here with me? And it says, uh, uh, lest any root of bitterness, say root of bitterness, uh, it starts with unresolved issues, then it goes into anger, and it moves on to resentment, and it moves on to bitterness, and then it moves on to revenge, and then it moves on to whatever. You know, friends, uh, springing and causing trouble, and by this many are default. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? I entitled the short message. And I'm supposed to finish at... Okay, right, I'll finish. when you Because I can't see you, I don't know whether you're sleeping or not. <laughs> Some of you are not wearing masks or more. Okay, never mind, it's okay. Okay, now look at me, please. You know, friends, you know, I entitled this short message. I want you to walk out of this meeting today loved. Say loved. Say loved. That's right. I want you to walk out of this meeting with this. You know, friends, I entitled this short message, The Amazing Love of God. The Amazing Love of God. And the Bible tells us in 1 John 3, 1, 1 John 3, 1, the Bible tells us, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? And we also read in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8, Faith stands to fail, prophecy stands to fail, but the love of God in you will never fail. Put your hands together, give Jesus a glory. Hallelujah. What is the purpose of this message? What is the purpose of this message in the next couple of minutes? Return to your first love. Return to your first love. One of the things I've seen in Pastor Suresh all these years, you know, man, we interact, I think, Shantini too, is he really loves the Lord. You know, more than wanting to serve God, he really has a love for God. Seriously. I'd rather be loved of God than be used of God. Sometimes when we are used of God, you feel abused. Seriously. Okay? What's the point of all the testimonies of breakthroughs when you don't even feel the love of God? Are you here with me? Come on, somebody say, man, please. Uh, listen to this. You may think... Uh, you're a stranger to the love of God. But I want to say this to you. But the love of God is no stranger to you. Seriously. Come on. Someone shout amen please. Return to your first love. And I'm going to share with you three dynamic breakthroughs that will come when you begin to love the Lord with your first love. Seriously. Come on. Seriously. When you really love the Lord from your heart. Now, Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. You know, this is the word that God gives to the church in Ephesus. Their hands were full. 
In other words, there are a lot of announcements of the activities. We're doing this, we're doing that, you know. But their hearts were empty. Their hearts were empty. Seriously. And then Jesus gives them this word. Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. When you continue to live in the past, the past becomes your idol. When you continue to live in your negative emotions, bitterness, and forgiveness, anger, or whatever, they become your idols. They are called the modern day idols. Are you here with me? Can somebody say man, please? You know what Paul tells us? Everybody look at me. You know what Paul tells us? In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, Paul says this. Brethren, I want you to know I'm not a champion. I've not achieved. What do you think I've achieved? I just do one thing. Satu sahaja yang saya buat. I let go of the past and I move towards the future. And then in verse 14, he says this, I press towards the goal of the price of the upward call in Christ Jesus. What is the upward call? Your later blessings are going to be greater than your former blessings. Your later breakthrough is going to be greater than your former breakthrough. Your later healing is going to be greater than your former healing. Come on, somebody say man, please. From faith to faith, from breakthrough to breakthrough, from happiness to happiness, from healing to healing, from restoration to restoration. Come on, put your hands together, give Jesus the glory. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. We have wasted two years in this pandemic. And they're telling us this pandemic is becoming endemic. But the God that I know in the Old Testament has got the power to heal the plague. Heal the plague. Moses did not come like, like the, uh, our health minister and said, we need to embrace ourselves. We need to uh, live a, a lifestyle of, uh, of uh, SOP and because this is endemic. But as a church, we want to trust God that God will heal this pandemic. Come on. Somebody say man, please. How many of you are with me? Come on. Yes. He's a God who heals. I'm not going against the government. I just prayed for the government anyway. Come on. Somebody say man, please. You know, it says here, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Remember, when did you become cold in your love towards God? How are we coming to church because we want to do churchianity? How are we coming to church because we want to be a spectator? How are we coming to church because we want to be a consumer? No, we come to church not as spectators. We come to church so we can become participators. We come to church not as, as consumers. We come to church as producers. Come on, put your hands together. Give Jesus the glory. Whoa. Come on, somebody say, wow. Isn't that wonderful? So it's time for us to stop playing church and start living church. Come on, somebody say man, please. And he says this, where have you fallen? I pray today the Holy Spirit will set your love for him on fire. Come on. Set your hearts on fire for his love. Every morning when I wake up in the early hours of the morning, one of the first things I do is this, Father, I love you. It's an awesome moment. Father, I love you. Sometimes when you tell our wives we love you, are you sure? Thank God God doesn't speak back. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I love you. Jesus, I love you. It's an expression of love. Can we go back to that love, please? Can we go back? How many of you would say amen to that? Amen. Return to that love. No guarantee that you're reading the word you have got first love. No guarantee that you're leading worship. Sorry, Jesse, not you. Okay, I also was worshiping just now that you have first love. 
Just because you pray doesn't mean that you have first love. First love is first love. Can somebody say amen, please? You know when someone loves God, we know. Come on, somebody say amen, please. And it says here, therefore, from where you have gone, repent and do the first work well. Come quickly and remove the lampstand from its place unless you repent. All the lampstand and all that I leave to Pastor Suresh to preach. Okay? <laughs> he has got light shops. He will be able to preach lampstand. And I'm not going to preach lampstand. I'm asking you to return to your first love. War, Jesus, war, I need. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, somebody say man, please. You know, the three amazing breakthroughs that is about to happen during this season when you return to your first love. Really, seriously. Turn to your neighbor and say, seriously. And I'm going to show you with scriptures. And I want to entice you through the love of God to fall in love with him. Are you here with me? Number one, when you love him with your first love, his love then brings us the breakthrough of his goodness in our lives. That's the first thing. That's the first thing. When we love the Lord with our first love, then his dynamic love, amazing love, brings a breakthrough of his goodness. Hallelujah. You know, friends, I'll give you the scripture in a short while. Yesterday in the wedding, everything was about the goodness of God. This couple also sang a song that would speak about the goodness of God. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. You know, friends, look at me. When David, everybody say David. David. At the back, are you with me? Wave your hand to me, please. No, okay, you're the wrong thing. Okay. Now, when David... Come on, look at me. Are you still with me? When David said in Psalms 103, you don't need to look down here, okay? In Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5, David said this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. He went on to say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits and he went on to say Roseanne you got double mask and he said who has forgiven you of all your sin who has healed you of all your uh, sickness and has crowned your life with love kindness and delivered for you from the destruction of the enemy and satisfied your mouth with good things that your youth will be like that of an eagle for God execute righteousness to both that are oppressed. Can somebody say man please? He was not uh, portraying an attitude of gratitude. No. That's not true. Yeah, otherwise he would have said bless the Lord oh my soul and thank you for everything. No, he was actually echoing his love, his love for God. Come on, put your hands together, give Jesus a glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. More than being thankful, he was in love with God. Everybody say in love with God. And friends, I told you a few minutes ago, when you love the Lord with your first love, it brings the breakthrough of his goodness. Let me give you a scripture that will speak directly. Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. And we know, sorry, many of us don't know. And we know all things. Everybody say all things. All that you've gone through in your life and you are ashamed and you feel rejected, you feel humiliated and you feel you have got a, you have got a bad deal in your life. No, all things, that all things works together for good. The law of harmony, the law of synergizing, all things work together for good to those who love him and were called according to purpose. Put your hands together. Give Jesus the glory. Wow. Somebody say, wow. God takes the broken pieces and doesn't throw it into the dustbin. God doesn't take the shattered pieces and throws it into the dustbin. 
God doesn't take away those dreams that are not fulfilled and throws it into the, into the forgetfulness of eternity. But he takes them one by one carefully and he puts them together and there he injects his love and brings his divine destiny to pass. Come on, put your hands together and give Jesus a glory. Wow! Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? If it is wonderful, turn to someone and say, wow. That's right. You think you are the only one who have gone through life's misery? You think you're the only one who have gone through people's displeasure? Friends, Joseph says this in Genesis 50 and verse 50. But as for you, that intention of every negative circumstances, that's the intention of people who don't appreciate you, don't love your vision, and don't care for your progress. And it says here, but as for me, as for you, you meant it evil. Everybody say evil. Wicked upon wicked, failure upon failure, backstabbing upon backstabbing, disgrace upon disgrace, shame upon shame, failure upon failure, bird, bird, everybody say bird. We thank God that's a word like but in our life. God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it's this day to save many people alive. Come on, put your hands together and give Jesus a glory. People, you know, people like you to be a zero, but God wants you to be a hero. Come on, somebody say amen, please. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? And I speak prophetically into this church. Your later growth is going to be effective than your former growth. Your later leaders will be far more loyal than your former leaders. Your later, your later ministries will be much more relevant than your former ministries. What you have closed down, what did not work out, God will multiply and give it back to you because this church has got a vision from God. This church is meant to be relevant to the society. Come on, put your hands together. Give Jesus a glory. And I speak it. I speak it. I speak it. I speak it into you. Have I gone through the path? Yes, I've gone through the path. If it is not for God's love, my wife and I, my children would have gone to Timbuktu by now. Okay, coming back to this, please. You know, friends, today, look at me. Today we have 26 homes, almost 1,000 people in the homes. You know, friends, now when something is dying, don't think it's going to die. Because God is behind that. Can somebody say man, please? And we just close our account for 2020, 2021. It's a pandemic year. You know, our income was something like 2.86 million Our expenditure was much less than that. We had a balance of 316,000. Are you here with me? Come on. Are you here with me? And I like to remind you, church, Hudson Taylor said this, a great missionary to China, God's work done according to God's ways will not lack God's provision. Come on, let's put our hands together. Give Jesus glory. Number two. Number two. Are you still with me? Okay, I don't want to take much time off, much of your time. I think I'm talking a lot, I think. Okay, now number two. When you love him with your first love. Let me see your notes first. All right, okay. <laughs> when, you, when you love him. <laughs> I want to know whether you're misquoting me. <laughs> okay, <you're there. laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, everybody online, focus. When you love him with your first love, then he brings the miracle, the miracles of hidden providence. The miracles of hidden providence. Come on. Are you here with me? Come on. Somebody say, man, please. 
You know, friends, there are people who love the Lord. There are people who really love the Lord. And the one who really love the Lord, you know, are the ones that have got their first love awakened in their heart. Come on. And they will do anything for God. Anything for God. What is important to God is important to them. What is first to God is first to them. Are you here with me? So when you love him with your first love, he then brings into you the breakthrough of the miracle of hidden providence. Say hidden providence. That's right. Do you know beyond your knowledge, beyond your ability, beyond your counsel, beyond your qualification, God has blessings for you. Amen. Pastor talked about prosperity. Psalms 35 and verse 27 says, God delights in the prosperity of his people. He puts his hand together and says, Whoa, you are blessed. Whoa, you are blessed. Whoa, you are blessed. Come on, somebody say man, please. The God that doesn't rejoice in your blessing are the gods of the world. The Akong, the Kwan Kong, the Burgen, the Supramanian, the Vinayagar. All those gods, they don't rejoice. Come on, that's why the scripture that God gave me for you two days ago is Psalms 115. Now I already gave you, don't write. Did somebody tape this? It should be there. Psalms 115 verse 12. You know what it says? The Lord is mindful of you. To what? To slap you? No. <laughs> to bless you. Amen. Bless your family. Amen. And read further. Come on. Take it and run Amen. like a wild ox. Amen. Amen. Really, your provisions are great. God's going to do that. Come on. Somebody say amen, please. Amen. Now, let's see the miracle of hidden providence. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Are you guys still with me? One, I'm going to finish. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 was 8 and 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. It says here, as it is written. Where is it written? Isaiah 64 and verse 4. As it is written. Uh, where is this? Okay. Now look, look at this. Everybody look at this. But as it is written. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Love Him. Love Him. The first one is all things work together for good to those who love Him and were called according. Number one, number two, for eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the good things that God has prepared for those who love him. Come on, fall in love, fall in love. This is your prophetic destiny. This is your prophetic provision. This is your prophetic path. Come on, somebody say amen. Come on, somebody say amen. We read in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Paul says the same thing. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond you could ask or think within the power that works in you. That power is the power of the love of God. Come on, put your hands together. Give Jesus a glory. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? And I, and I want to say this. Everybody, I want to say this. God has got treasures in dark places for you. God has got riches in secret places for you. This is a prophetic word. I release this to you. Seriously. You know, friends, Isaiah 45, verse 1, 2, and 3 says, O King Cyrus, I, the Lord, will go before you, and I'll open double doors. Double doors. Everybody said double doors. Swing open double doors. Okay, double doors. Open double doors. And I, the Lord, will go before you and cut the bars of iron. Impossible. Cannot penetrate through. And then I will break down the gates of bronze. And I, the Lord, then will give.
give you the treasures of darkness and riches in secret places. Then you will know that I am God. Put your hands together. Give Jesus the glory. I release this word to everyone who says. Okay, finally, I close with this. When we love him, when we love him with, with our first love, he gives us a breakthrough from all kinds of fears. How many of you have got fear? Can I, don't put up your hand. Can we have all kinds of fear we have? Especially during this pandemic. You know, seriously, this pandemic. You know, a lot of people got fear, uncertainty, anxiety, right? Worry some more. Right? We are so scared. Omicron will come. Popcorn will come up. And Delta will come. All kinds of variants will come. And our health minister says this. Learn to live with, with Omicron. You saw learn to live. Like as though we received Jesus and learn to live with him. He said you need to develop a lifestyle. What lifestyle you are talking about? Okay? And we have Jesus, Right? That's not good. Get into the politics. Okay? And then, you know, that's right. Love. Say love. Love has got greater power than the authority and the command of authority. Love sets you free. That's why the Bible tells us in the, the, the theme scripture. Now, look at me, please. Everybody look at me. There. Everybody look at me. This is a breakthrough. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. Come on. Whatever fear you may have. Okay. The uh, Proverbs, the 25th chapter was 29. The fear of man sets a trap. But he who trusts in the Lord will be safe forever. Come on. Somebody shout amen please. There is no fear. In love, let me read 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. There is no fear in love. There's no fear in love. Come on, somebody say amen, please. But perfect love casts out fear. What is perfect love? The love that we love Jesus with. That's perfect love cast out fear because fear involves torment. What is this torment? How many of you want to know what? Torment. This torment is the oppression of the enemy. Anxiety, anxiety, worry, uncertainty, speculations, and all kinds of things. Come on, somebody say man, please. But he who who fear has not been perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. How can you be perfect in love? Perfected in love. Start loving God one more time. Start loving God one more time. You invest love. You will reap love. You invest Invest affection. You will reap affection. Learn to love God with your whole heart. Come on, put your hands together and give Jesus a glory. That's why 2 Timothy 1.7 tells us. 2 Timothy 1.7 tells us. For God has not given us fear. If God has not given us fear, who then gave us a fear? Cannot be a father and mother. Your father and mother are not so powerful. Is the spirit the devil? The devil. Are you here with me? For he did not give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of power. Power. Everyone say power. Boldness. Love and sound mind. Come on. Somebody shout amen, please. Because of time factor, I like to share with you how can I continue to stay in his love consistently? How can I continue to live in his love consistently? Number one, stay in his trust. Stay in his trust. Trust. Trust in God will not rust. Trust. You're not writing? Trust. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Do I sound like a Tamil word? I think so. Thing. Tamil pronunciation. Put your trust in him. Stay in his trust. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. Number 2. Stay. Number 2. Stay in his abiding presence. Stay in his abiding presence. God has meant our intimacy with him to provide their abiding presence. 
That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter, chapter 6 and verse 6. When you pray, go into your room, shut the door. Pray to your father in the secret place. Your father who sees in the secret will reward you openly. Abiding presence of God. Your consistent daily prayer life. Number three, stay in his word. Stay in his word. 1 John 5, 3 tells us, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandment. This is the love of God. We keep his commandment. And his commandments are not burdensome. Are you here with me? The degree of your love uh, is, is measured with the degree of your obedience to God's word. Come on. Somebody say amen, please. And finally, number four, this, this, this involves every one of us. Stay in love with one another. I mean brotherly love, not any other love, okay? Stay in love with one another. You know, friends, that's how you promote this love. You know what the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4? 1 John chapter 4 verse 20. If you say that you love God whom you cannot see and you hate your brother whom you can see, then you are a liar. Are you here with me? So when you stay in love with one another, you grow the love of God in your heart. Can somebody say man, please? Can you stand to your feet right now? Let me just pray for you. Thank you, God. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Thank you, God. We give you praise. We give you glory. All over this place. Thank you, dear Father. Wherever you are, I want you to just lift up your hands to Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. We recollect, dear Father, the breakthroughs that would come from your love. The breakthroughs that will come from your love as we begin to love you, dear Father. Number one, the breakthrough of your goodness. Number two, the breakthrough of the miracle of hidden providence. Number three, the breakthrough from the spirit of fear. Come on, lift up your hands to Jesus. I, want, I like to remind you of Revelation chapter 2 verse 4. Nevertheless, I have this thing against you that you have left your first love. And I'm asking you this morning, Will you return to your first love? It is a win-win situation. Some of us may be upset with God. Some of us may be angry with God. Some of us may be upset with God. Some of us may be upset with what's happening in your life. Whatever your situations are, come back. To his first love. Can you do that? 